Today we're going to do kind of an interesting thought experiment, and that is, what's the geometric mean of all of the values of a function where you take the inputs to be on a certain interval? So maybe let's first recall how you would do that kind of thing, not for a function, but a set of numbers. And well, to keep it simple, let's say that we have positive real numbers. So let's recall that the arithmetic mean of positive real numbers a1 through an is simply their sum divided by n. So in other words, the sum divided by, well, how many of our numbers you have. Whereas the geometric mean is the nth root of their product. So their product, well, to the, well, whatever root of the number of numbers you have. Okay, so let's push this to a function and let's first develop what I'll call the arithmetic mean of our function f of x for our values x between a and b. Okay, so somehow we'd like to take all of the values of the function on a and b and add them up and then also divide by the number of numbers you have, but obviously there's uncountably many of both of those types of values. But we could perhaps get an idea of how to translate this into something meaningful by looking at limits. So let's make a partition of the interval from A to B. And so what we'll do is define some numbers. So I'll say that a is equal to x0, that's less than x1, that's less than x2, all the way up, that's less than xn minus 1, which is less than xn, which is equal to b. And then, well, let's also set delta x equal to, well, a couple of different things. We're going to set it equal to xi minus xi minus 1, so that means all of those numbers are equidistant apart. In other words, we're splitting the interval from a to b into n equal pieces, but in order to do that all at once, it's going to be b minus a over n. Okay, so now let's note that if we have a very large value of n, then our arithmetic mean of f of x, well, that should be pretty closely approximated by the arithmetic mean of the values of the function at these partition points. So that means that kind of what we're looking at is fx1 plus fx2 plus all the way up to fxn over n. And so like I said, for large values of n, that should be, you know, approximately equal to the arithmetic mean of f on, well, this interval, of course. But then in order to find, well, the exact value, well, we would simply take a limit. And then let's introduce some notation as well. So let's say we have am for arithmetic mean of f, and then we could subscript this with a, b for the interval a, b, but let's not worry about that here because we're fixing our interval a, b. So that should be the limit of this object. So here we're taking the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n, and then we have fx1 added all the way up to fxn. Okay, but now let's observe that 1 over n can be expressed in terms of delta x. You know, that might not seem like super useful, but we're about to, you know, relate this to something well known from calculus. So what could we do here? So 1 over n, let's observe that that is equal to delta x over b minus a, meaning that we can rewrite this as 1 over b minus a, times the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum as k goes from 1 to n of f of x sub k times delta x. And now probably if everything wasn't coming together already, everything is coming together now because all of this stuff that's overlined in orange is simply the integral 
of our function f of x from a to b. And well, what have we just like derived essentially? Well, we've derived something that's generally taught in an integral calculus class, which is the average value of a function on an interval. So kind of following our nose through things, things that seem to be the correct way to define this arithmetic mean operation, we've got the arithmetic mean of a function. Well, it's simply one over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x. Okay. So now let's notice that that means that the arithmetic mean of x on a, b, that could be thought of as, well, the arithmetic mean of the interval a, b. Because there we're like adding up all of the numbers between a and b and then dividing by the length. Well, let's see what we get there. So we'll have 1 over b minus a and then the integral from a to b of x dx. But, you know, that's going to give us b squared minus a squared over b minus a times 2, just, you know, using the fundamental theorem of calculus. But then doing some simplification, you see that that gives us b plus a over 2. In other words, the normal average there. Okay, so there we've got it, the arithmetic mean of a function. Now let's see if we can look at the geometric mean of a function. We just re-derived the average value of a function, or in other words, the arithmetic mean of a function on an interval. Now we're going to look at the geometric mean. So we've got the same kind of setup. We've partitioned our interval, and we've introduced this delta x and these xi's, you know, as we did before. Okay, so now let's go from there. So the geometric mean of our function here should be approximately equal to, and this is of course for large values of n, well, the nth root of fx1 times fx2 all the way up times fxn, so something like that. But now, you know, keeping in mind that a lot of times when we're dealing with a large product like this, we often take the logarithm and turn it into a sum. So that's in fact the trick that we're going to use here. So let's do that. So here we'll have again for large m, the natural log of the geometric mean of f will be approximately equal to, well, let's see, it'll be 1 over n and then times the natural log of fx1 plus the natural log of fx2, all the way up to the natural log of fxn. Okay, nice. But now, well, let's look at that. That looks pretty familiar as well. Notice that we could replace this 1 over n with delta x over b minus a again, and we would have that this is in fact equal to 1 over b minus a, and then we have the sum as k goes from 1 up to n of the natural log of f of x sub k delta x. But our geometric mean is not equal to this. It's not even approximately equal to this. The logarithm of it is approximately equal to this. But now we can like change this approximate equality to an actual equality by taking a limit. So that'll give us the log of the geometric mean of our function is simply 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of the natural log of f of x dx. We took the integral there. But again, this is not our geometric mean. This is the logarithm of our geometric mean. So that means in order to actually have our geometric mean, we have to exponentiate both sides. So let's do that. So we've got our geometric mean on the interval a, b of our function f is equal to, I'm going to put exp for exponentiation. So it's the exponentiation of 1 over b minus a, and then the integral from a to b of the natural log of f of x dx. So it's kind of a gnarly formula, but I think it was a worthwhile experiment to get here. So now let's do an application of this to find the geometric mean of all numbers between a and b. So now we're going to find the geometric mean of our interval a, b. 
But that's going to be applying this formula right here to the identity function. So let's see what we should get here. So I'll just put gm for geometric mean. So we'll have 1 over b minus a. Sorry, this should be exponentiated. So we'll have the exponentiation of 1 over b minus a. And then we have the integral from a to b of the natural log of x dx. But taking the antiderivative of the natural log of x is actually a bit of a pain. You can use integration by parts, but maybe we'll just write down what this antiderivative is. So if we take this, we can see that the antiderivative is x natural log of x minus x. And then we have to evaluate this from a to b, of course, because it's a definite integral. But now from here, what we can do, well, is just put b and a in there, do a subtraction, and then do a bit of simplification, and you come up with the following number. You'll have 1 over e, and then after that, you'll have b to the b over a to the a. So I think that's a pretty interesting expression itself. And then all of that is raised to the 1 over b minus a. So working from this line to this line, it's really just pushing symbols around. It's no big deal. And now, you know, maybe as a homework exercise, you could come up with some sort of expression for the harmonic mean of a function on an interval. And then you could apply that to an interval to find the harmonic mean of all of the values of an interval. That'd be a nice extension of this. And that's a good place to